Hey guys, what's going on? As you can see, I'm out at Vegas for SHOT Show and I just got back from Industry Day. Uh, this was my very first trip to the range even though this is my third SHOT Show. So let me tell you, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. I'm trying to pull a video together for you guys. Uh, I wanted to do a top 10 video, but it was just gonna be way too long. So I'm gonna do my top five takeaways from Industry Day and we'll just go from there. If you guys have any questions, sound off in the comment section down below. If there's something I didn't cover, ask me, and I'll try to uh, let you know what I was able to see if I was able to get my hands on one of these firearms at range day. Okay, let's jump right on into it. And the first thing that I'm going to have to talk about is the HK SP5. Now, I've been very critical about the SP5 and why HK did it the way they did. And I took some time to talk to the HK representative specifically about some of the differences from a quote unquote standard MP5 and why they went away from that for the SP5. They took time to talk to me about that and really changed my mind and perspective on why they did it and why they had to do it. And after getting an opportunity to shoot some rounds through the SP5, man was I wrong. Boy, I, I'm, I'm just going to have to freely admit it. I was wrong. And uh, it, it's a sweet shooter. Is it worth the $23 to $2,500? I'd say yeah. I mean, in comparison to what you can get for with a Zenith, uh, about the same price, maybe a little bit cheaper. Go ahead and get the uh, HK. Spend a little bit more money, and uh, at the very least, you'll have a uh, a really nice MP5 clone, right? So, uh, had to admit, I'm wrong on that one. All right, the next thing that I was able to do is take a look at the Ruger 5.7. Now, this one was something that was really interesting because Ruger was really trying to challenge FN on their 5.7 pistol, seeing that FN basically cornered the market in that realm. The Ruger 5.7 is incredibly sweet shooting. Uh, it was really flat, uh, no recoil really whatsoever less recoil than a nine millimeter, a lot of fun to shoot. And coming in about $500 or more cheaper than the FN 5.7, uh, they've, they may have something on their hands here. Now the downside to the 5.7 is the fact that the 5.7 by 28 millimeter round is incredibly expensive, but um, if that's something that you just have to have, Ruger 5.7 may be a good viable option. So there's one and two. All right, number three is the Brownells BN180. I was able to shoot their pistol that they had set up and it was a lot of fun. I was really surprised at how uh, much I liked the uh, 180. I knew that I was going to like it, but I didn't realize how much I was going to like it because that dual recoil spring system that they have set up inside of it is super cool. And they're gonna be releasing something tomorrow. I can't really say anything today, I don't think, but uh, tomorrow we're gonna to have more content from Brownells at SHOT Show. And uh, I'm excited to talk about what they're going to do in 2020 for the BN180. So there is number three. Now I would say the most interesting and unique firearms that I was able to shoot was from ST Equipment. It was their Ultimac 100 Mark 8. This shoots from a open bolt, this rifle shoots from a open bolt position and a select fire being brought in to the United States from Singapore. Um, the only reason why I wanted to bring this up was because it was the most unique firearm that I was able to shoot at range day. Uh, not too many pistols or rifles out there shooting from the open bolt position. Uh, so to be able to get my hands on something like this uh, and you know try something new was really super cool. So the ST Equipment Ultimac 100 Mark 8 is my number four. And then finally number five, I had to do it. It was for my dad, the Colt Python. 357 Magnum. I was able to shoot the six inch barrel version and let me tell you that was awesome. Uh, probably one of the sweetest smoothing double action triggers I've ever been able to shoot. The single action trigger was under three pounds I think. I mean it was super light and the target that I was shooting at 10 yards had one of the hostage flappers on it 
I was three for four on that with the uh, with the Python, and I was really happy. I was really happy with that with that pistol. So uh, definitely a a, uh, a positive from Colt when it comes to reintroducing the Python. I think I think that it's going to be very popular. So let me know what you guys think. What did I not talk about? Sound off in the comment section down below. I want to know what I missed and if I did shoot something that you guys are interested in, uh, I will let you know in the comment section. So thanks so much for swinging by. More content from SHOT Show and we will see you in the next video. Have a great week. Freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Bye y'all.